Okay, hello and welcome everyone. Welcome to JFD Traders Tea Time with me, Dyrus on the Charles Cuts. Today is the 9th of June 2020. So yep, welcome everyone. Welcome to this Tuesday's afternoon recorded session where we're gonna have a quick look at the markets, a few of the charts, the usual stuff. Um, but before we do that, as always, let's quickly have a read through our risk disclaimer. So the content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. As always, a few seconds for you to read the rest, and we can continue. Okay, so now then, uh, also just as always, before we jump into the charts, a uh, quick mentioning of our JFD YouTube channel, to which you can always subscribe to in order not to miss any of our upcoming videos. And of course, our JFD Bank website and specifically our JFD research page, which we also update on a daily basis. So yep, feel free to visit us here on jfdbank.com and click on the research tab right there on the top. So I believe you can find some useful information here. Um, right, quick update on what's happening here globally. So as you can see, the figure continues to rise, but not as much. So which, well, it's a good thing. Um, so yep, and uh, we can see that yes, the situation is still bad. However, um, the yep, the we'll continue monitoring this, but uh, hopefully we uh, manage to slow this one down. But um, and uh, I don't, I I hope we're not going to reach eight million. Uh, by the end of this week, but again, of course, we'll, like I said, we'll continue monitoring uh, the situation. But uh, hopefully, the, the kind of the the infections have slowed down, so the pace of the infections have slowed down. So, uh, but yeah, uh, of course, the only thing we can do right now is hope. So, jumping into the markets, um, the first one I want to touch on here is the quick update on German DAX. Now, uh, this one is selling off today, and uh, it's moving lower. And uh, yep, it's it failed to move above this uh, 12,887 territory that I mentioned uh, this morning. And it and what else? What I mentioned also this morning was that if we see a drop below the 12,000, uh, 12,000. 671 territory here, which was the low of yesterday, then yes, further declines are possible, especially if we get a daily close. And by further declines, I mean further declines up until this upside support line taken from the low of the uh, 14th of May. Uh, because then uh, if this upside line provides some decent support, then we could see a nice rebound and a push back to the upside. So again, uh, from the very, very short term perspective, yes, this could continue drifting lower if we see a daily close below this uh, 12,671 zone. Um, and then, yes, like I said, we will aim for this upside support line. But uh, if it remains intact, we could see another round of buying. Uh, in case this stays above the uh, 12,671 territory here today, um, then we'll probably take this a little bit of a neutral stand here. And uh, we'll continue monitoring this 12,887 uh, 12, territory in order to uh, kind of get a break above it and then aim for higher levels because this is going to be our barrier for some higher uh, a break of which uh, would uh, would could open the door towards higher levels so that's why uh, be very careful for now guys now looking at nasdaq 100 and uh of course uh yesterday it had a strong rally it moved uh up up and away and kind of it 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 created a new a new uh higher high so yep all this is kind of um kind of it violated the this this rising veg pattern that i talked about a lot last week and uh but if we're looking at the cash index right now and where it's trading at the moment moment we can see that the um, the price is currently balancing near the 9851 zone so basically we are below 
uh, yesterday's close, uh, but still above this April's high, which is around the 9,737 zone. Um, in a way, uh, in that, in this case, if it continues to balance above this, then uh, maybe we could see a nice uh, little correction here up until this level. If it, like I said, if it remains intact, or should I say, if it, if the price continues to balance above it, then we could see a nice rebound and a push higher again. However, if the if this uh, area gets violated, the 9,737 zone gets violated, then, well, uh, this could in a way also violate this um, lower side of the rising wedge. I mean, to be honest, it's no longer a wedge. Now it's just this upside support line that we're going to keep an eye on. And uh, this upside line could get violated. And, well, I mean, this probably won't look very good for the bulls as this would increase, as such a move would increase the, 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 the chances for the bears to, to drive this index lower so that's why uh, we'll be very careful today guys uh, like I said we'll keep an eye on this 9737 zone if we get a nice drop below this then well I mean this could also place of course the uh, the price below the this upside support line and in a way also keep your eyes on this because if the uh, daily candle closes below this area, uh, one thing is to get a break, but uh, we don't want to get a false breakout. So that's why uh, we don't want to get something like this, where we had on the what we had on the 27th of May, where we also had a false breakout. But as you can see, it still ended the day well in the positive territory. So that's why wait for a daily close below this upside line, and then we could consider uh, lower areas. So that's why be very careful here, guys. Uh, DXY, uh, I talked. About this one this is a quick quick update of what uh, what I've mentioned this morning and uh, this morning I was telling you guys to keep a close eye on this downside line as you can see it got broken uh, at once today um, the index drifted higher and uh, tested the 97.07 level also something that I've mentioned today but what I what I was also saying that we need to see a nice good daily close above this area in order to aim for higher levels um, for now, we're not seeing that. However, it is kind of giving some good signs for the bulls. However, it's still too early, I would say, because, like I said, we need that confirmation break here above the 97.07 zone and ideally a daily close above it. So um, that's why if, if, if by any chance today during the U.S. trading session, uh, this index, uh, the dollar index drifts lower and, and falls below the 96.36 uh, zone, which is the lowest point of December 2019, then, well, lower levels could be met again. But uh, for now, it's very interesting right now. Like I said, it's uh, it did try to, it did have an attempt to kind of uh, flirt with this 97.07 level. Uh, and, uh, yep, it did so, and but it failed to stay above it. So let's, like I said, let's wait for a breakthrough one of these levels. A uh, quick update on, on WT, oh, sorry, WT, uh, Brent Oil. Um, looking at this picture here you can see that the um, the pr the price is moving lower which is in line with the idea that I've mentioned this morning uh, uh, where I was saying that if, yep we could see a bit more declines here we could see this one drifting back down towards this upside support line taken from the low of the uh, 22nd of April however if it remains intact we could see a nice rebound and a push higher for those who are more on the cautious side you can just wait for a push above yesterday's high which is roughly around the 43.40 zone and then aim for higher levels this way you will just wait for a uh, forthcoming higher high and yep you could be a little bit more on the cautious side uh, but like I said for those who are more on the risky side uh, keep your eyes on this upside line because if it does provide support and we do see a nice rebound here from this uh, this upside line and the 100 day EMA uh, shown as the green line here then yep more buyers could be joining in. Uh, in terms of the downside, we will we will consider uh, lower areas if we get a drop below the 36.96 zone here, and only then aim for lower areas. For now, uh, we're not doing anything. We're just observing the price action. Ethereum. 
again we cannot really do much here as well because as you can see the crypto is still struggling with this 252.50 level um, so this is a strong barrier as you can see it failed to kind of uh, close above this area uh, that's the highest point of March uh, for now we're keeping an eye on it so on one hand you can see that yes uh, this barrier is still holding the price down on the other hand we are still above this upside support line taken from the low the 13th of March so in a way kind of uh, some positivity could still be seen here um, however until we get that confirmation break here above the 252.50 zone uh, we're not really going to do anything and uh, yep for now we're just going to wait a quick update on NZD USD. I talked about this pair this morning and I was telling you guys to keep a close eye on this potential idea of, of a bit of a correction here to the downside where we could see uh, the, the pair kind of testing this 0 0.6448 uh, zone marked by the highest point of March. Um, as you can see, the pair is drifting towards that area. It's It has still got a few pips to go to until it could hit this level. Um, however, um, however, for now, uh, still this area could be seen as a good support zone because if um, if this area does hold and if it fails, if the if the bears fail to kind of move the rate below this area, then yep, another round of buying could be possible. For those who are more on the cautious side, you could just wait for a push above the 0.6580 zone and because this would confirm a forthcoming higher high because don't get me wrong, we uh, this pair could uh, rebound from this, for example, from the 0.6448 zone and could move sideways here for a little bit. Uh, we've seen this happening many times, so yep, do not exclude this and that's why I'm saying that for those who are more on the cautious side uh, because like I said, um, a break above the 0 0.6580 zone kind of would do the trick here for more buyers because this would confirm a forthcoming higher high. Um, in terms of the downside, or should I say a larger correction to the downside, now again, we would, as I've mentioned this morning, we need to drop below the 0 0.65. For uh, 48 territory, and then we could aim for this upside support line taken from the low of the 19th of March. Uh, USD CAD. So uh, here the uh, situation is quite different, and uh, well, let me just probably update everything here. So uh, first of all, let's get rid of this uh, arrow. First, uh, initially I was talking about, this is where I just wanted to quickly update you on. Initially I was talking about this level here uh, acting as a good potential area of support. It did initially do, do so, this 1.3465. It did so eventually, but the pair did drift, uh, did overshoot a little bit and uh, found uh, support around here. Uh, let me just mark this one near the 1.3356 zone from which as you can see it is rebounding right now so um, it is rebounding but however it is still uh, struggling with this level the one that I've mentioned previously this 1.3465 so you can actually keep this on your on your chart right now because um, <clears throat> if we get a nice daily close above this then yep it can it increases the chances of for the um, <clears throat> for the pair to drift a little bit higher to go for a larger correction now initially we would tar in such a scenario we initially we would target the 200 day EMA here which is maybe roughly around the 1.3560 mark um, and if it provides resistance then we could see then something like this where another round of selling could be possible um, however if if the um, if that line uh, gets broken uh, then yes this could in increase the chances of a possible kind of larger correction to the upside because don't forget that we're still below this uh, below some of the downside line so this I've, I've got here on the chart is one of them so one is taken from this high of the 31st of March and <clears throat> as you can see we, it's, a, it's probably a more of a uh, or should I say a less uh, tentative one because we do have more touches so we would keep an eye on this one but um, another one maybe to just mention not to maybe focus too much on but to mention uh, is this uh, downside line taken from the highest point of March near the uh, from the, around the 19th of March I would say even so uh, that's why initially th this this could be our target this could be our area uh, uh, f uh, which to, uh, at which we could aim uh, if the, let's say, first of all, 
the pair closes at least a daily candle above the 1.3465 zone, then overcomes the 200-day EMA, and then yes, like I said, we, we, could, we could aim for this downside line, uh, which, as I said, still is a bit of a tentative one because the more slightly more important one for us is this one right here, taken from the high of the 31st of March. Uh, GBP, uh, GBP USD. So here the problem. And I've talked about this one um, this morning because what I was saying that. The fact that the pair uh, the pair moved above the 1.2650 zone 1.2650 zone um, certainly that's a positive that's a good that's a good sign. Um, however, uh, the problem is here in this 1.2726 level, which is the lowest point of February, which uh, previously acted as a strong area of support. Uh, now it's taking the role of resistance, and in a way. This becomes now the more important uh, area, which I'm going to highlight, um, and uh, we're going to keep an eye on this one because, in a way, uh, we would like to see a nice good push above this in order to aim for higher levels. The, um, of course, the fact that it's still kind of balancing near this 1.2650 uh, zone, that's a good sign, and the fact that it's still uh, trading above the uh, this 200-day EMA also is a nice positive thing. However, as I said, we cannot really talk about any higher levels for now. Un unless we get a nice good pop above this, because above this 1.2726, because as you can see, it continues for the past three trading sessions here, it continues to act as a very strong area of resistance. So that's why uh, we will wait for a nice good pop above this level in order to aim for higher levels. However, if this starts dropping hev heavily back below the 200-day EMA uh, or even the 100-day EMA, then well, maybe not everything is that good in the bear uh, in the bull block. And uh, well, we could see maybe further uh, decline. So be very careful with this one. Keep your eyes on that one. Uh, GBP Aussie. Now here is uh, this is what I've mentioned this morning. Uh, this morning I was talking about this downside line, which I was telling you to keep an eye because if it gets broken, then it may open the door towards some higher levels, especially if the pair also moves above this 1.8250 territory. As you can see, it did so. It is currently trading slightly above that. And uh, now we would like to see a nice, good, firm daily close above this downside line in order to aim for slightly higher levels, For a, in order to aim for a a bit of a larger correction, I would say, because don't don't get me wrong, we're still below uh, the 200-day EMA, and uh, well, I mean, maybe not uh, not everything is still good uh, here with this pair, and uh, it could correct low, it could, could correct higher, but uh, we'll be very cautious around these areas right here. Um, but um, if this downside line continues to provide resistance and uh, we see that the pair is struggling with the with kind of overcoming the, all of the all of these uh, barriers here the the 1.8250 and the downside line well then maybe another round of selling could be possible however uh, as i mentioned before uh, ideally preferably we would like to wait for a drop below the 1.8058 zone as you can see it acted as a very strong area of support and a drop below this area would confirm a forthcoming lower low and yep we could then aim for further declines and finally euro usd so uh here as you can see it worked out perfect with this area the one that i've mentioned this morning in my video in my traders espresso um so basically this 1.1237 territory acted as a fantastic area of support um it because it coincides here with this 23.6 percent per percent retracement on the fibonacci and what i was saying that if this area provides support continues to provide support then we could see a nice rebound here and a push back to the upside this is by the way a daily chart so um so yep we had a, on a four hour chart probably we'll have a nice Nice four hour candle here drop dropping well actually let me just jump into a four hour chart um, so yeah a nice good drop here and then you can see a perfect hit of this area and a rebound and now we're it seems that the pair is trying to climb back up um, of course uh, don't get me wrong uh, we'll be still very careful um, we yes we will be aiming for higher levels uh, for now but uh, for again, probably a little bit of a similar story here with uh, for those who are more on the cautious side. You could wait for a push above this barrier right here, this uh, the the high of last week, which is um, uh, roughly around the 1.1384 zone. And uh, let me just probably quickly mark that on the chart. Uh, and then kind of aim for higher levels. But again, that's uh, 
I would say maybe a bit of a, a huge uh, area to miss out on. However, uh, don't get me wrong. Like I said, for if you're still very careful here and cautious, that's that's perfectly fine because, again, uh, we we it may drift again lower. It may test this area, but if it continues to provide support, then yes, and the buyers could step in and drive this one higher again. Um, but if it suddenly starts falling below the 1.1237 territory here, uh, this area here for us will be somewhat of a neutral one. However, if it starts falling below the 1.1147, now this is where um, it, maybe a few more bears could get excited. And uh, yep, uh, then we could see larger extensions to the downside. So that's why, guys, be very careful. For now, yes, we are somewhat bullish. Uh, the fact that it rebounded nicely here from this level, from the 1.1237, is a good sign. Um, but like I said, we'll be very careful for now uh, due to uh, we want to see how DXY is going to perform here because if suddenly DXY starts popping higher here, then well, uh, well, guess what? A euro dollar could start dropping lower. So that's why uh, be very careful and let's, like I said, probably let's focus right now on the dollar itself, the US dollar. So, okay, guys, I really hope you found it useful and uh, thank you very much for watching and listening. I really appreciate your views, guys, your likes, and really, really, uh, really, really thank you for that. And you, it does mean a lot to me. So thank you very much. And I hope you found my video useful. If you want to catch my video tomorrow morning, as always, my uh, around uh, six o'clock GMT time, maybe a little bit after because currently I'm still doing recorded sessions. Um, so yep, hopefully, hopefully from next week, I will start doing these live again. And uh, yep, uh, but for now, yeah, please be patient with me. And uh, like I said, catch my video tomorrow, my Traders Espresso, <clears throat> just a little bit after six o'clock GMT time. And uh, yeah, we'll take it from there. Thank you very much and have a wonderful evening. Bye-bye.